Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, a while back, I did a video on how to set up a 3D presentation for your virtual event uh, using Unreal Engine and Aximetry. So today I'm going to revisit that project and I'm gonna fiddle around with it. I'm gonna give it a more uh, futuristic sci-fi hologram-ish look to it. And uh, to do that, uh, we're going to be using uh, the Niagara particle system in Unreal Engine. And to get this done quickly, I'm going to be using a uh, asset that I purchased from the Unreal Engine marketplace. Now, if you're watching this video and you're like, hmm, I don't need to buy a, an asset from the marketplace to do this, I could pull this off. Uh, then you would probably be someone who has, uh, you know, basic to medium knowledge on how to use Niagara particle system. But you know, for most of us, especially beginners, it's kind of uh, intimidating to start learning and diving into the particle systems in Unreal Engine. So this can be a quick uh, solution for you guys that just want to, you know, uh, execute that holographic look for your project. So uh, this is the pack I'm going to be using today. So it's called the Niagara Hologram Pack by Sour Game. I will be leaving a link in the description to it and. It's nothing fancy, it's uh, 20 Niagara hologram effects, easy to customize. And as you can see, there are shapes included with it, but we're not actually going to be using any of these shapes. We're going to be using our own shapes uh, that are already set up uh, for our presentation. We're only going to be using the particle system from it. So let's set it up. All right, so here we are in the Unreal Editor for Aximetry. And this is the exact same set that I used in my how to set up a 3D presentation tutorial video. If you guys want to know how to set that up, you can uh, watch that video first. So in this video, I'm really just going to focus on how to uh, apply the uh, holographic effect to the 3D presentation. But just to recap a little bit, here in the center of the stage, I have a blueprint. And inside it, everything is already set up for a 3D presentation. And by the way, if you guys want to download the blueprint, it's available in my Patreon. All right, so in the Niagara hologram pack that I've already downloaded, uh, inside the folder, there is a blueprints folder. And there are some uh, pre-made blueprints here with the static meshes that come with the pack. And I'm going to open up a few of them. So here's one that looks like a city. And here's another one that looks like a brain uh another one here that looks like a solar system and here's another one that's a dna and uh, let's say i like the look of this dna one and as you can see in this blueprint uh all there is inside it is just the uh, niagara particle system component and so um i want to grab this i want to find out where it is so i'm just going to click here my uh, little uh, find and folder. All right, here it is, NS uh, DNA, and I'm gonna just duplicate it so that if I make changes to it, it's not going to ruin the original one. I'm just gonna call it numbers since I'm using uh, numbers as the uh, objects here for my presentation. NS underscore numbers, okay? And let's open it up. And this will open up the particle system. And don't worry, we're not going to do much to it. I just want to show you guys something. If I click on the node here and scroll down, uh, here we can find a segment that says stamp, sample static mesh. And it says your source mode attached to parent. So basically, this particle system is going to get the static mesh of its parent. The source is going to be its parent. So which means all we have to do now is I'm going to open up my BP presentation blueprint here and I'm going to add a new component to it. Add uh, Niagara particle system component. Okay. And I'm going to make it a child of the static mesh that we have here. And here I'm going to set the scale back to one and now it's still empty and I'm going to search for the NS uh, numbers that we just set up. There we go. And now 
as you can see, there is a particle system that's taking the shape of its parent, which is the static mesh that we have here. And now what you could do is just select the static mesh and set its visibility to none. Boom. So now all you have is the hologram. There you go. Uh, now, I just wanted to add one thing. If you guys followed my previous tutorial and uh, you were getting this uh, warning, here it says uh, usage of the set text has been uh, deprecated. Set the property directly. Don't worry about it. This is a very e easy thing to fix. Just delete the set text here. And you can just like drag again from the text 3D and type in set text again. And there you go. Plug it back in and hook up the text again. And now you should be fine. The next thing you need to make sure is that uh, for our presentation, we don't want to show the static mesh anymore, right? We made it, uh, we changed its visibility to none, uh, here to none, and we don't want it to show again in the presentation. What we want to do is to be able to turn on and off the hologram. So if I go to my event graph, and as you can see here for uh, the blueprint, it's still set up for the turn on and off. It's still referring to the static mesh and we need to change that. So you need to make sure that it's referring to the particle system. So I'm gonna drag that out and I'm going to plug this uh, instead to the set visibility. There you go. So you gotta make sure you're referring to the correct uh, component and when you're done just compile. All right so uh, I went ahead and uh, turned down the spotlights uh, as well so that you know the scene becomes darker so that the uh, particle effects will uh, be more contrast and be more visible. So let's cook our project and check it out in Eximetry. All right so I've cooked my project and I am now in Eximetry and let's test. I'm going to trigger showing the hologram and there it is. And of course I can make it rotate. And now let's try switching to another model, like number two, enter. And it is switching to the number two static mesh. But as you can see, there's a little bit of an overlap because the uh, previous model is being unloaded and it is the particle is loading for the next model. I'm gonna try number three. And it's not doing that uh, fast enough. It's actually pretty cool that there's this effect of a uh, fade in and fade out. So uh, this is probably a good time to uh, dive into the particle system and make a few settings and tweak a few settings so that it will uh, spawn uh, or unspawn faster. All right, so here I am back inside the uh, Niagara particle system, our NS underscore numbers. And if you're just getting started with the particle system of Unreal Engine, it might seem a little bit intimidating because there's uh, so many features and you know so many variables that you can play around with. But I found that if you know what you're looking for, you know what you want to do, it's actually uh, not that complicated. So for example, like right now, our issue is that when we're changing between static meshes, it's taking too long for the first, like the A1 to disappear before the B1 spawns. So the B1 is spawning faster than the A1 disappears. So there's an overlap. So which means we just need to actually play around with uh, one variable. If I select the uh, DNA node here, the particle system here, I can just look for something called lifetime, All right? So basically when we kill the object, um, we want to make sure the particles die out faster. And right now it's set to five and that's really long. So I'm just going to set a number like one. All right. And that's all we need to do actually, because I don't need to change the spawn rate because I, I still want it to spawn really fast. I just need it to disappear faster. So let's test it out. And now back in Eximetry, when I do change numbers, boom. There's only a little bit of overlap, which is actually fine. It looks much, much better now.
And that's all there is to it. That is how easily you could stylize your 3D presentation uh, with that holographic sci-fi look. Aren't Unreal Marketplace assets the best? I mean, they make my life so much easier. And by the way, if you guys want me to review and showcase certain assets from the Marketplace, uh, let me know in the comments and, you know, I might fill around with it and, you know, make a video on how I might want to use it in my virtual production. So I hope that content was useful. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, and as always, I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and of course, all the subscribers for keeping supporting this channel. See you guys in the next video. Bye.